Good evening, people of the internet. Um, I'm sick, so uh, forgive me if I'm not as, you know, goofy and bombastic as I normally am. <laughs> Today's video is Tales from the Crypt. It's a very goofy episode that we're walking into right now. <clears throat> and while it's rather interesting and also showcases two crazy people that are involved in a relationship... Uh, it also has some interesting points that I think is, you know, something I think more horror movies should do. So, I will see you at the end. Maybe, if I don't die. Oh, oh. All right, kiddies, I'll tell you Judy, my you're not yourself you today. Let's see, yeah, we did ventriloquist last time. Let's find out why Judy isn't herself. <clears throat> I've just been sitting here waiting for my blood pack to harden. Yeah, I think I need My cosmetologist that. said I was starting to look a little lifeless. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Much better, eh? Which reminds me, tonight's poison parable is about a couple who take their appearance very seriously. Needless to say, they're going to end up trying to save face. <laughs> I call this one... Judy, you're not yourself today. Whoa. That piano. Ooh. Oh, I like that. That's such a little cool. It's it's a weird amalgamation of like Kind of like, um, oh, like this very sad joyfulness. That's very interesting. Those are some sick ass arpeggios, too. Props to the pianist. Pianist. Die, Cretan. Breakfast is served. Down of my darling, who the devil are you talking to? Oh, oh I know her. Oh, she's the fucking. Don't. She's the, uh. Sometimes the ghost of present kicks time. fucking Scrooge in the balls. <laughs> Seven, eight, two, three, four. Oh, I'm so relieved it's been so long. Hello, Frank. I'm the ghost of Christmas present. I had a funny feeling. Perhaps I am. Is that Hugh? You tell me that you still love me, darling. No, no, okay, it's not. That really looked like Hugh Laurie for a moment, but no, no, it's not. Who the devil can that be at this ungodly hour? Who at this ungodly Lord? hour? Uh, she definitely sounds next very posh. There appears to be some sort of solicitor at the door. On a fucking Saturday morning? Oh, no, please. It's really necessary, le breakfast est servi. Donald. <laughs> Big gun. Donald. <laughs> what? Uh, good morning, sir. I'm from the Gun Elimination Legislation Activists for Total <laughs> National Neutrality. <laughs> you want to run that mouthful by me one more time, pal? Good morning, sir. No. Just the name. Gun Elimination Legislation Activist for Total International Neutrality. Gelatin. You're from something called Gelatin? No, uh, please forgive me. Honey, this is the man from Gelatin. Hi. Hey, actually, there's an F in there someplace. All right, or maybe there's, there's not. Sometimes he just gets carried away. Carried away? You know, this is why I go door to door. What's your blubbering, you big baby? It wasn't like even loaded, see? see? You, you could have shot her. Oh, wake up, pal. A man has got that a is not gun safety. <laughs> Always treat your firearm as if it was loaded. That's right, Lydia. I threw it off. Well, oh, where were you during Vietnam? I was six years old. Yeah, likely excuse. <laughs> That's what I hate about gelatin. It's always full of nuts and fruits. Donald, look at me. You see these? 
These are wrinkles. Mm. And they are caused by stress. And do you know what causes stress? Having your husband point a gun at your head. That is what causes stress. You're not yourself today. Snap out of it. Snap out of it? That's your answer to everything these days. Snap out of it. Well, I have no time to argue. I'm already late for the gun club. Don't even think club. about lighting a already cigarette. Late for the gun club. Really, why? Because. Because why? Because the smoke dulls my hair, that's why. Don't smoke cigarettes. Don't point guns at my head. You know, my God, Judy, you were standing right there, and I still don't think you get it. You can't let God, the whole like world into your living room anymore. just like every nagging bitch I've ever known. You don't want the door anymore. And if you do, I'm telling you, you better be ready. And this, this, my dear, is. Yeah, so, um, strange couple, yeah? Um, <laughs> definitely very interesting that they found each other. She's just as crazy as he is, but they're crazy in their own unique and special ways. <laughs> well, I'm off now. Lock the door behind me, cheerio. By the way, two episodes now with people that have been in the movie Scrooge. Oh, no, it's interesting. Not again. I'm not we spoke. We did on the phone. This is uh, 300 chats worth. Well, yes, it is. But I'm afraid I have never heard of Avatar Cosmetics, my good woman. Oh. I see. Should I have? How long have you had that uh, problem with your pores? Uh, I don't know. Petty. Oh, I'm sorry I disturbed you. Oh, well, wait a minute. That, right there, is grade A manipulation. And it's done really well, actually. There's a little bit more in the scene that I'll show you as well. But this character uh, definitely has their hand in manipulation and has done it for a very long time. Possibly even hundreds of years. Ooh. Oh, what if I was interested in purchasing one of your products, say, for my pores? <laughs> Not possible. We have a very select clientele. Plenty of time for a lovely little chat for us, no? I, I especially like that sparkly one. Oh, yes. Yeah, women with taste usually do. Thank you. It's very Man, beautiful. she's buttering her up. Hmm. Those are probably like trophies. You don't mind? No, go ahead. You know, as I said before, you really are quite beautiful. That's what I thought. Thank you. Great ass. Here she got a great ass. And you got your head all the way up it. I like it even better when it's I. As you can see, as I said, it's it's very goofy, but it's this has some serious undertones, like every Tales from the Crypt. In not only Tales of the Crypt, in other stories as well, we've seen uh, stories where the concept of the concept of the concept of the concept of love. some witch or evil doer <laughs> steals the body of a young person. So it's definitely been done before. I like the angle that this one's taking. 
uh, like a witch is like a door to door salesman or posing as a door to door salesman, <laughs> manipulating women to switch bodies. Uh, it's so simple. And it's not like this grand spell that they have to get, like, all these materials for and whatnot. It's just like, you know, she's already done all that and it's just a necklace. So she's clearly a very powerful witch. And I wish we saw more of her powers, but we don't, unfortunately. But I know that there's definitely more, so. So, yeah, cool. Double thumbs up. This dude is f genuinely fucking insane. I don't know anyone that's like actually in firearms that is that negligent with fucking firearms. That is crazy. Now, where the fuck is my wife? I am your wife. We were married July 12, 1979. Well, you what church? Faith Calvary. Yeah, what was the name of the minister? Reverend Tenney. How many bridesmaids? Three. Well, who walked you down the my, aisle? My uncle. Yeah, well, where did we spend our honeymoon? The Black Hills. Okay. What was the room number of our honeymoon suite? We didn't have a room. We had to spend the night in the car because you forgot to confirm the reservation. Oh, come on, how could you know that? John, it's me. It's Judy. I'm, I'm your wife. Donald, Donald, my body was stolen. No, why? Because she just threw back three gin and tonics, and when I sat down next to her, she told me to go to hell like she knew the way. Where are you? Train station. Listen, man, your old lady's in one foul mood. Judy is not herself today. Okay, thanks, Joe. Oh, and Joe, um, don't call my wife an old lady. Come on. Oh, do you think these look good together? Uh. Donald, Donald, what? Let me out. Uh, Donald, what do we got? I think that's Donald. a 1911. You couldn't really tell. I think right here is a great example of Carol Kane and how good of an actress that she really is. I don't remember seeing her in a lot of very big movies. Uh, I could be wrong about that. Uh, just my memory. I, of course, I wasn't even alive during the 80s. So, <laughs> But the way that she's able to switch from a more reserved character, a little goofy, kind of whimsical, to, you know, a bad bitch... <laughs> She does that very well. And uh, you'll see more instances in this episode where she, her switches between, you know, different characters. Very, very well done. Now, that would be... That would be something. I, I mean... That actually happened how we deal with it, you know? can't let you do it. Oh, you can't well, you run away from it. Don't you see fight. that? Oh. Asshole. Judy, you've got to face up to it. The cancer is spreading. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You know there's no hope for remission. That it's just a matter of time. Don't spend your last few weeks without me. That was clever. Man, let me tell you, this guy, he is actually really smart. He makes a lot of great decisions in this episode. 
Uh, he's also stupid and a little reckless. But, you know, damn, this was some quick thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking three billion IQ points. That was crazy. Wait. It's not over with yet. Come on. Not so tough now, is she? No! Oh! oh my god! He's... Oh my god! Yeah, I expect. Uh, yeah. That was great. Crime in this city is out of control. Mm. Thank God I went down to Gunther's Guns and picked up a spare. I don't think one would have done it. Right. I'm gonna go out and buy some more. Okay. And I think you should too. Hey. You're so sweet. I feel so good. I feel so helpless. And yet so Oh, no, yeah, that's clever, actually. So you're good to fuck with nothing, right? <laughs> yes, it was tied with the music. That's perfect. Perfect, perfect. I'm so worried about her changing back, though. Don't yet, do not put it on. What are you doing? I mean, we shouldn't even have it here. I tried melting it. I tried crushing it. You can't destroy it. Well, couldn't we just keep it on the vanity or on the nightstand? You know, somewhere we could look at it all the time. No. 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 Babe, you've got a witch buried in your basement. Get a grip on reality. <laughs> the irony. Music in this episode is great. It it adds a very jovial uh, feeling to it, rather than like horror, which adds this like playfulness to the episode, uh, you know, that I might not otherwise have without the music that was added. And it's timed with everything, everything really, really well. And it's got some notes of melancholy, but it's just an upbeat tempo with that sort of melancholy, also a little bit of a waltz, kind of floaty feeling. It's very, very well done. And I think the, the music in this one, as well as some of the other Tales from the Crypt episodes, is exemplary. <laughs> it's very good. Nightmares must be contagious. What, what were you dreaming about? Same thing that's been bothering you, that moldy old bitch we got buried in the basement. You know, I've been thinking maybe I'd dig her up. In the middle of the night? No, not now. I just thought that maybe it'd help those nightmares if we buried her someplace else. This guy really is how everyone should be in a horror movie. He's crazy, but he's logical when he needs to be. 
most of the decisions that he's made are quite good decisions, actually. He's able to not only deduce that that wasn't his wife, he was able to come up very quickly with a plan that actually got the witch to trade, and preemptively he had locked the witch's body in a closet already. Which, I guess, technically he shouldn't have because probably the witch would have left. But we don't know. The witch could have lied, lied, and lied, laid in wait. There we go. When he did kill her, <laughs> after he actually fucking shot her finally, <laughs> he buried her in their own basement. And only the two of them know of her existence. Which hides the evidence very, very well. And then when they're having nightmares, then he's like, okay, well, maybe we need to reposition the body. Right. Everything that he's doing is pretty logical. Most people in horror movies don't even come close to making the proper decisions. Fuck, they try to, like, cut her into pieces and, like, put her in garbage cans. Or they would, like, they would probably spend, like, half the movie trying to figure out that her his wife had even switched places with a witch. I mean, it, right, super slow, always stupid, always going the wrong place. But he's actually made some pretty decent decisions. And um, I applaud the writers for that. I prefer horror movies where people make good decisions, but because of the evil entities, they still get fucked in the end. That's the kind of horror movies I like. <laughs> Oh, shit. Help me. Please. Oh, like a there it is. Dude's got some great voice. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry, but that yelling and running was hilarious. Play it again. <laughs> oh, this guy is crazy. Uh, the actor is doing a great job, I think. Uh, he's fitting the character perfectly. And uh, it's just great. That, that yell was perfect. Judy? Help me! Judy! Kill it! Donald, it's Jake! Kill it! No, Donald! She switched bodies again! It's it's me! Donald! Don't let her take my beautiful body! Don't let the head destroy us! Donald! No! Shoot it! Donald, shoot it! Shoot her smarter! So that you can't be fooled! No, Donald, I'm your wife! I'm Judy! No, Donald! I am your wife! I'm Judy! No, Donald. I am your wife. I'm Judy. I'm your wife. I'm Judy. Judy. Pull the jag around front and wait for me. This could get messy. Judy. Yes, Annie. We don't have a jag yet, honey. Let me see you pull that quick changer one more time. Donald, be careful. I lose easily. What? Your wish is my command. Man, she said that so perfectly. 
It was cold, but it was like, it was cold, but in a diabolical conniving sense. It wasn't cold like serial killer. It was cold like evil manipulative witch. <laughs> but yeah, she plays that so well. And I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read the rest of it. Play. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! I just want to sleep. I will let the rest of it play. It's really good. <laughs> oh, Donna. Hang on, honey. Yeah. <gasps> what does the NRA handbook? Just you do now. Judy? Bond. James. Been an art no! I still think. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. <laughs> You'll be glad to know that that witch gave up door-to-door -door sales and joined the Peace Corps. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Donald. You can't really blame him. He was only trying to give his marriage a shot in the arm. <laughs> and in the leg. And in the head. <laughs> Sometimes I crack myself up. <laughs> Until next time, kiddies. Pleasant screams. Ah, <laughs> oh, that was a good one. I like the ending. Said it at least once um, during my overviews, but um, I like the idea that he pretty much did everything that he should have done. There was really nothing that he did that necessarily hindered them. Necessarily. I'll go into more detail, of course. Uh, hopefully I can chat a little better when I talk about it, but... <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna chop that there. I know what I'm thinking. I know what I'm saying. <laughs> ah, so tired. Thank you very much for watching my video all the way to the end. I hope that you enjoyed it. This was a good episode. Like I said, it's very goofy. I had some serious undertones, just like Tales of the Crypt normally does. But it had some very interesting st uh, storytelling moments in it that I feel like were excellent. One, the music was fucking amazing. It was super silly, but I think it was on point for the tone of the episode. It was timed with everything perfectly, and it came in and out when necessary. It was very well written. And then, the characters themselves, I think, each individually, were written very well. The witch was the perfect manipulator, and did it very, very well. The wife was a crazy, you know, um, what's the word? Not shut in, what's the word? The wife was a crazy person, but appeared to be sheltered most of her life. So the excitement of everything got her going. <laughs> and then the husband was a fucking kooky bastard, but goddammit if he didn't make some good decisions. I love horror movies. I said this a little bit, but I love horror movies where people make the right decisions, but because the evil is so cunning, it doesn't matter. I feel like it's too much of a trope for people to always go to the basement. You always go to the attic. They always go, ah, it's not a ghost. They always do that, right? If we really want to scare people, and I know this episode was silly, but we need to, not we, but people need to use this element more in a horror movie. And that is, they make the right decisions, but because of how evil the entity is, or evil the person, or the serial killer, whatever, because they're so evil, conniving, manipulative, 
the main characters can't do anything and will lose. That is far more terrifying than someone making goofy fucking decisions and getting killed. Because, of course, they're going to get killed. And, you know, there's a place for it, of course. You know, Horror is... Uh, Obviously entertainment, and that's entertaining when a fucking character keeps making all the fucking wrong decisions. You're just watching, you're like, come on, man. Why the fuck? Come on. Why? Why are you doing that? But we really need more movies where people make the proper decisions and the logical decisions, and it still doesn't help them. That I is, in my opinion what would add to the scary because you can't escape it no matter how smart you are and on that lovely note i'm gonna end it here because my voice is getting tired <laughs> i hope you have a lovely day night evening <coughs> whatever diamond happens to be wherever you are why do i always go to this i don't know and i will see you next time Oh, fuck, I'm so tired. <laughs>